What's up everybody? Welcome to another awesome Redshift tutorial. I'm Liam Klishram and today I'm going to talk to you about using proxies inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift and how that can really speed up your workflow by not loading in a ton of geometry. And then I'm going to do a quick little snippet on AOVs and rendering a depth pass and how to bring it into Photoshop or whatever application you're working with the composite things. So let's go ahead and jump into it. <laughs> All right, so here's our scene from the hero picture that I set up in the beginning, um, except there's no trees here, there's no forest. And so that's what we're gonna be working on setting up. We're gonna start working on setting up the forest and trees using uh, Redshift proxies. So to get into that, I'm gonna go into this file here and you'll see it's just blank. There's nothing going on except for a dome light so we can see our scene. And I'm gonna merge a few objects. And so I'm gonna go into this assets folder and bring in this stump FBX. Do, 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 don't want to rename, just select, there we go. And there's our FBX file. And so it just looks like a normal asset. And I'm gonna rename this to stump01 and go down to file, export, redshift proxy. So I'm gonna choose this proxies folder and I'm not gonna hit save yet, but I just wanna show you all the options that are available in a proxy. So the reason you wanna use proxies are, uh, it doesn't load any of the geometry into your scene. It's just gonna bring in either a very low level of detail proxy um, or you can set it to just be the bounding box or you can set it to be nothing and then it only loads when it's time to render and uh, I believe if, if I've done my research right it only loads what is in the camera view too so it calls everything else so it really can speed up your render times so and the export settings what you're gonna get are either to export selected objects or you can export your entire scene, which is really awesome. So if you're working on a really complex scene and then you want to start adding more stuff into it, you can just export the entire scene, start a new file, bring it in as a proxy, and then start working with it. And you can do all your look dev right here and then any other extra work you can do here. And it keeps your file really light and nimble and being able to move around quickly. And with that, being able to export your entire scene, you can export the lights. Uh, polygon connectivity. You can compress the data so you can make the file really small. Um, you can set your origins to world origin or object bounds. And then when you hit OK, you can choose to either have it uh, add the proxy to the scene or not add it. You can set what that proxy's name is going to be. And then remove the object that you're turning into a pro uh, proxy if you want to. And the other cool thing is it carries over animation too. So it's kind of like an advanced uh, Alembic file, but specifically built for Redshift. Um, so it carries over animation, polygon information, texture information, even though it doesn't say it here. If you put a texture on this and you hit export, it's going to carry it over. And I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to hit cancel. And so I've got this stump texture pre-built right here bring that on and you'll see it's got the details here and I even have some displacement on here so if I want to add displacement I'm going to go down to redshift tags redshift object and under geometry just hit override and displacement turn that on you'll see it gets a little bit of shift right there and some extra displacement to it to really pick up those grooves so I'll bring this down here and let's go ahead and bring in another object. So we'll go here, assets, and we'll do the other stump that I have. Bring that in. We can just rename this to stump02. Bring that down. This is gonna have some displacement too. And this one's already built. So we'll go ahead and throw that on there. Slide this over. And you know, we can scale this up too. So now we've got two stumps, both have displacement, both have materials on them. And one more final tree. We're just gonna load in this third one here. Do, 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 do. come on, there we go. Hit okay. 
that's looking tall enough slide that over and I've got the texture built right here and this isn't really a stump it's kind of a tree so we'll just name it trio one and I think this even has some displacement on there too let me just go in and see yep just a little bit of displacement on there so now we've got these three set up and I'm going to export these individually because I want to have more control over them when we get into our next file. So again, file, export, down to Redshift Proxy. And I'm going to go into this proxies folder that we have set up and just name this tree 01. Hit OK. And I don't need any lights. Uh, compressed data is fine. I don't need to add this to the scene and I don't need to remove that. <laughs> And world origins fine because we can adjust that when we get into the next scene and there's no animation so just hit okay and that's that and if it's a really big file you might see down here some notifications going that it's running and all that so i'm just going to do this again export redshift proxy go into proxies and this will be stump 01 or this one's actually 02 let me go back and make sure I name that correctly. Oh, stump 02. That's good. Name this 01. And one more time. This is one of those moments where you can probably hit fast forward for a second while I do this. <laughs> Stumo. Okay. Good typing. Liam stump 01. And while I'm right here, let's go ahead and rename this to stump. There we go. Cool. So we've got all these saved out. And I'm going to go ahead and just close this. All right, so we're back in our original file here. And so what we're going to want to do is start bringing in our proxies and using them in a cloner or we can set them up manually and scatter them around so they can be instances um, and really keep our scene light and nimble and then everything's going to be calculated here by redshift and that way as you move around the viewport as we have a ton of polygons it's not bringing your system down and then at render time it still looks great so first thing I'm going to do is start turning off some of this stuff. Uh, everything from like these dishes all down to the log should be turned off. If you hold Control and Alt at the same time, you can turn those off. On a Mac, it's probably Command and Alt. Um, it's been a while, I forget, I'm sorry, but I think that's the same deal. And then I'm going to go ahead and get out of this camera view, and we can bring in our first proxy. So if you go into File, Merge Objects, Here's our first stump. Hit open. You'll see we can kind of see it there. I'm going to go ahead and throw in another dome light just so we can see things a little better. So there's our dome light. And looking at it, you see it here, which is exactly what a proxy should be doing. You can see we have all of our textures, displacements all carried over. But in here, it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to bring the stump down to the bottom here. And if I bring this up, you can see there's a really thin line that is the bounding box of this object. And, you know, that's well and good if you don't have a dark scene that you're working with, but sometimes it's really hard to see. So over here in your attributes, you get some settings like the path, uh, show bounding box. So if I uncheck that, it goes away completely. You just get this axis here. If I do preview, you get bounding box and it's going to fill in the bounding box. So that way you really can kind of see what you're working with. If you're setting up your camera, you can see where all the boxes are that are either in your way or could be inhibiting your view and things like that. Um, but I really like to do just load up a mesh. And what that's going to do is bring in a really low level detailed mesh. And if you want to bring it down even more, you can control that here. I usually like setting it about 80. That might be a bit too much since it's already converted down a lot. 90 should be about right for this stump here. We can get it right here on the plane and pretty much be all set with that. So I'm going to go ahead and add it into a cloner. I've got a cloner uh, object right here. I can just click on that while holding Alt and it'll automatically put it into this cloner. And we're going to turn this into a grid array. We don't really need any on the Y, just one there. And we're going to spread this out probably like 15 by 20. And it could be like 2,000 
by 1500. We'll try that. So we get all these stumps just like that, really fast, really easy. You can start moving around, working on our scene, and it keeps up really well. If you want to be really fast, you can go in under sampling and crank it all the way up to three. I already had it at two. So just really light and nimble and easy to work with. So that's great, that kinda looks all the same. So why don't we go ahead and bring in our next object and we're gonna do the same thing. Bring in Stump02, bring this down to here. And I'm gonna turn on my mesh so we can see what's going on. You can see we get all the different meshes in there. And that's all right. It's still kinda a little too organized. So in our cloner, I'm gonna go ahead and go in here and make sure I turn on instances. I forgot to do that. You can see it will still use these as instances, which is really awesome. So it keeps everything light. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn fix clone off just so everything aligns the way I want. And uh, under clones, instead of iterate, I'm gonna go down to random and you'll see things start to shuffle around randomly, but that's still not exactly what I want. So why don't we go ahead and go in and grab a random effector. So I've got all my effectors right here, or you can grab them from MoGraph effector. So I'm gonna grab mine right here. And I don't think I actually grabbed it. <laughs> Try this one more time. Random, there we go. And under param our parameters, I don't need any on the Y. And this we can probably do 500 by 500. And I'm gonna turn my rotation around and just rotate these a little bit so they get a little bit more uh, differentiation as they move around. And I probably need to spread these out more. So how about uh, just the seat a little bit and we can go a little bit wider around here and a little bit longer here. That way they're really getting spread out. And I realize I could probably use less counts and really finesse a few less, but this just makes it fast and easy. I know that I want a lot and I want them scattered around. And so this does that and then I can adjust my sizing so I get the spacing exactly how I want. So the last thing we're gonna bring in is our tree, which is right here. We're gonna do the same thing, bring it down here, throw it in there, and then it starts being scattered around with the rest of this. So if I go back into my original camera setup, that's looking pretty similar. Looks like the tree trunk, trunk needs to come down a little bit. So we're gonna adjust that Y there, make sure it's really hitting the ground plane. It's looking about right. And if we kill the dome light now, we'll get our same mood back for the most part. So the only thing that I probably need to do, and we can mess with it when we bring the bike in, is figure out where things are placed. But once we get that going, what if things don't look the way we want? So we did all this texturing before, and it seems to fit well now, but what if you have a director that comes back and you need to change something? You don't wanna to have to go back in and make another proxy and then another material and deal with all that. So you can actually change that in the proxies. So for giggles, let's say we've got um, an art director that came by and said, we need to update this tree with more moss or something along those lines. So under materials, you can choose where you get your materials from. So it could be from the po proxy file, it can be from uh, an object, or it can be from the scene. <laughs> And if you just do object, you can go ahead and replace it. So I believe it should be this one here. If I drag that over, it'll update just like that. If I come out of this view, um, let's go find a, a tree that's close to a light source. Uh, probably right about here. I see these big bounding boxes. I'm not sure that's gonna be enough to do it. Mm -mm -mm. All right, I'm gonna throw a dome light in just one more time so we can see what's going on. All right, so we've got these trees and this tree doesn't have any texturing done to it very well, so it's gonna be black, but you can see it just updates it just like that. And 
if you want to go back to the original, you just hit delete and it goes gray and we can go in and do from proxy file and it will update just like that. So very easily you can start doing look dev without having to change a ton of stuff. So I'm going to go back into this and turn off our dim light again and start turning our other stuff back on. We've got all this here to bring back in. That tree is right through it, so why don't we try spreading this out a little bit. Doot, doot. That's starting to look almost where I had it before. It's looking pretty good. Nothing weird going on. I'm going to go ahead and turn my, whoop, my mesh on just to really make sure. And the cloner, spread this out even more. Hmm. Maybe a different seed, how about that? I kind of want something more in the foreground, so. Uh, oh, I kind of liked, where was it? There's one, oh, there it is. Going too fast. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We've got one right there, and I'm gonna go ahead and select my bike and rotate around it just a little bit, maybe pull back. It's looking pretty good. We've got that tree that's right there, but I can go ahead and move this back. You'll see it updates really fast because all these are instances and proxies, so it's really not calculating geometry. So that's starting to look pretty good. It's not exactly how I had the original set up, but that's okay. Um, I, think, I think that's where I want it. And you'll see under my camera, I've got some depth of field going, and that's for a whole nother tutorial. And I've got volumetrics going right here. So I've got this environment and all my lights are contributing to that. And if you haven't seen it in a previous tutorial, uh, we have a whole tutorial on doing God rays and volumetrics really fast inside Cinema 4D and Redshift. Um, just a few clicks and you can do it and it's way faster than any other third-party renderer that I've used so far. So we've got this scene. Now what if we want to tweak some stuff in post? What if we decide that we want a depth, a depth map um, because it's taking too long to render for whatever reason? Um, so you know, I've got this pretty much how I imagine it. I'm going to go ahead and just kill depth of field in here. So under bouquet, just kill that. And so now we don't have our depth of field, but I've got my camera right about where I want it. And I'm gonna go into render settings, redshift, and go over to AOV. So AOV is multi-pass. And here you can do uh, everything, a depth field, um, you can do ambient inclusion, just a background, you can get a beauty image, which is, you know, what you normally render out flattened. Um, bump normals, caustics, caustics raw, a puzzle mat, which is uh, basically, uh, if you think of it as a puzzle of RGB. So one object will be red, one will be green, one will be blue, and kind of continues through that. That way you can kind of separate things out a little bit easier. So for this, I'm gonna do a depth map, which I've already got selected. And you'll get a bunch of options when you do this. So you can choose filter type if you want a full, uh, minimum depth, maximum depth, center sample, so just right in the center there. I'm doing full because I want it from zero to one. And the way I'm gonna get that zero to one is by selecting Z normalized. If you do Z by itself, it's gonna be zero to whatever the camera sees. Um, so if I uncheck that, uh, it won't let me reset it, but it's usually up to like 100,000, and that's not what we want. We want normalized. And then multi-pass output, we want to check enabled here, and I'm not going to do a multi-part EXR. I really want a separate file here. And file output, you just hit enabled, and you're all set. And you'll see that multi-pass is checked here, and then when you go to save, you can do save and choose it wherever you want. So let's do um, do renders 
in here and we'll just say for YouTube. And we're gonna call this tutorial uh, regular image. That sounds about right. And then this one for YouTube, we're gonna call this tutorial MP for multi-pass. If we hit save and hit shift R to render, we'll see it starts rendering and then I get my little feedback display going, which I have pop up now. Um, I don't need that really for this. So this is gonna start going and it's doing its passes for the point cloud and um, that will take a second to, to cache and then it will do its full render. Go ahead and go up to say 65%. That should fit pretty well. And you'll see it chug along. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward through this part so you don't have to sit through this rendering and I'll talk to you in a few seconds. All right, so now our render's done and we're gonna jump into Photoshop and take a look at the depth pass that was rendered out and what you can do with it. So inside Photoshop, we've got our depth pass on top here and then our beauty image at the bottom. So with the depth pass, you can't really do too much to begin with. You know, you can multiply it so the back stays light and the front gets dark based on the values in there. You can do the reverse through a dodge or lighter color. And you can kind of just mess around with it however you want. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it at normal and unselect that. So what I've done just ahead of time is copy this background layer and I have a program called, or a plugin called Frischluft Lens Care. If I go into that, you'll see that you can do depth maps here. And I'm not gonna walk through how to use Frischluft because you can download it yourself and mess with it. But it'd be the same thing if you're compositing inside of Nuke or Fusion or After Effects. You can use this map to drive your depth. So when I turn that off, here's the original beauty image and here's it applying the plugin to it. And it's not perfect, it's just really fast. It doesn't It didn't take all the data, like some of the areas in front here need to be blurred more, and this could have a little bit more blur to it. But for a baseline to start working with and compositing your images, this is how you go about doing that. So when you render out AOVs and multipass from Redshift, you can start incorporating it this way. You can build deep, EXR files, which means that everything's baked into an EXR. Um, so you'll have your depth map and you'll have a beauty pass and you'll have um, position pass and everything all inside one EXR file. I personally like to have them separated out. I feel like they're a little bit easier to work with depending on which compositing program you're working with. Sometimes a depth map will get read wrong and it'll be put in a red channel when it needs to be in its own channel or um, certain things like that. So really, AOVs are quite easy to work with as long as you know what they're gonna do and their purpose. And uh, I, I just, I, I don't think it's a good idea to take the time to go through each one individually because that's pretty much taking a render and then another render and another render and another render and going back and forth between a bunch of different programs all at once. So I'm gonna keep it really simple with just this depth pass and hopefully that gets you an idea. Um, check out the Redshift manual on the site. Um, if you have a proper Redshift login, it's right there. You just go into support, find whatever program you're using. For us, it's Cinema 4D. And you can start going through the manual looking at AOVs and what each one does and its purpose. Um, this is a forewarning that it seems like in a couple weeks that they're going to be revamping how AOVs are done. So you can start doing more custom attributes, um, things like that. And that's a huge, a huge discussion that's going on on the forums right now. So, um, you know, this, this part, this AOV pass may become outdated in a couple weeks. So just keep that in mind. All right, everybody, thank you so much for all the participation that you've been doing and commenting with these and the live streams every Thursday. If this is your first time watching one of my tutorials. Uh, every Tuesday, we're going to release a new tutorial on Redshift. And then every Thursday, 
We do a live stream across various platforms. So if you follow me on Twitter at underscore five, F-I-V-E, numeral 31, so F-I-V-E 31, or Brograph, uh, it's at Brograph, same as the title. Uh, we post when we're going to be streaming. It's usually around uh, 8 o'clock Central Time, 9 o'clock Eastern Time. It fluctuates sometimes depending on people's schedules, but that's that's generally a good baseline to figure it out. So again, every Tuesday a new tutorial comes out. Every Thursday we do a live stream based around whatever. So if I was talking about AOVs one week, we're going to talk about AOVs for a little bit, and then you guys can just throw questions at me and do silly stuff. Um, and also check out my website, www. 5-31.com to find out more about schedules and the tutorials I'm going to be releasing. I have a calendar there. And then also check out Brograph's new Slack. It's brograph.com slash Slack. And you can come on there and ask me questions too. Um, so if you're a listener of the podcast or there are other tutorials, anyone can come in, sign up and jump on Slack and ask us questions about Redshift, Octane, Cinema 4D, and anything else motion design related. All right, guys, thank you so much again, and I look forward to talking to you on Thursday. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning Cinema 4D, After Effects, and other motion graphics tools specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. With tutorials, plugins, and now a podcast with tens of thousands of listeners worldwide. Yeah, it's a great community to be part of. We give you professional time-saving tips, industry news, interviews, shortcuts, and lessons that help keep you current in the world of motion design. Throw in HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put a reflection, and gorgeous. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Our weekly long-form podcast will give you the latest news, help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. Learn about the latest render engines, modeling techniques, and workflow integration while staying entertained. Real nice banana. <laughs> That's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Our BroGraph talks are a chance to see the way industry leaders from around the globe are changing the face of motion design. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel. And I'm not here to judge. The podcast and talks include people like People, Barton Damer, Nick Campbell, Andrew Kramer, David Aryev, Chad Ashley, Paul Babb, EJ Hassenfrost, Mitch Myers, Chris Schmidt, Jules Urbach, Cornelius Dammer, David Brodeur, Andy Needham, Caitlin Kaju, Zubair Parker, Noseman, Ryan Bean, Casey Hupke, Nick Lyons, Sage, Joey Corinman, Jeremy Cox, Rick Barrett, John Dickinson, Matthias Omatola, Patrick Gosky, Brandon Clements, Steve Teeple, Tom Glimpse, Patrick Longstrom, Julia Simone, Devin Coe, Al Heck, and even Dead Mouse. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame frame what? Our BroGraph breakdowns go behind the projects and give you an insight on what it's like to manage and maintain your own personal business or work for a large company. Join us for live sessions, check out our useful plugins, watch time-lapse projects, interact with us, and send us email questions and topic ideas. Or just hit the rando render button and do an imaginative daily that'll keep you on your toes. Take all your dreams and let's do it! Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. Pretty good, I guess.